Hi, this is Les Taylor of lestaylorphoto.com, and today I'm going to be taking you through a walkthrough of how I edit many of my images in Lightroom 5. Now, of course, this is just one step in my post-processing workflow, uh, but it's a big step, an important step, and so I thought it might be helpful to show you uh, what I do with an image like this. Now, of course, I'm not going to explain or go into detail about every little thing for time's sake, but if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section, and I'll do my best to uh, answer uh, however I can. By the way, this image comes from Shirayuto Falls in Shizuoka Prefecture, Japan, a beautiful place and definitely worth the visit uh, if you get the opportunity to do so. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing I think is good to start with here is lens corrections. Now the reason for this is this is kind of foundational to everything else. So if you start here uh, then you won't have to maybe make changes as much later on. Whereas if you make the other more detailed changes first and then do this, you might realize that uh, you went too far with something and have to go back and readjust. So I start here with my profile uh, corrections. And I was shooting on a Nikon D7000 with a wide angle Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter lens. So I choose Tokina here and it automatically selects that and there you go. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is remove chromatic aberration. Now you can't see it from uh, far out if you're zoomed out looking at the entire image. However, if you zoom in here, you can look along and you can see kind of along the edges here of the water especially, there's a little purple line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose to remove chromatic aberration. And that'll get rid of a lot of it, but I like to remove a, a little bit more. I still feel like there's just a tiny bit left. So I'm going to move it up to maybe, let's say, three. And that will uh, get rid of everything. Okay, so let's zoom back out. And so we've made those first adjustments and then we can build on top of that. So let's go to our basic module here. Now, I'm not gonna worry about white balance right now. In some Im images I would, and this one I'm not going to, and I'll explain why later on. So for now, I'm gonna move on to my exposure and contrast uh, adjustments. Now on my exposure, I'm gonna move it up to, whoops, not that far. I'm gonna move it up to about 0.2 here, okay? And on my contrast, I'm also, also going to move that up to 20. Okay. And then in my highlights, I'm going to move down to about, let's say, negative 10. And I'm actually going to move my shadows up into the 30s. That'll probably be the biggest adjustment I make here. The whites, this is going to affect especially the, um, the area, the streams, um, the flow of the water there. And so I'm going to move that up to let's say about 20 or so, that'll be good. And the blacks, the contrast and clarity and other things, that's gonna um, affect those. So I'm just gonna leave the blacks at zero where they are. Now I wanna say a, a note about clarity. I think a lot of people have the tendency with clarity to just push the whole thing up and crank it up as far as it goes. And it looks interesting, I guess. Um, and it can maybe give a sort of futuristic look and, and other interesting feels. But in an image like this, I don't really wanna do that. And I don't think you wanna do that all the time. I think you have to think about why you're using clarity. Clarity for me in this image is just to give a little bit of pop and a little bit of uh, detail there. So I'm gonna move it down. And I think I'm gonna maybe keep it around, let's say 15. That'll be good, 14's fine too. Um, so we'll keep it around there, and that will keep the image still with that natural feel to it. I mean, it is a waterfall, um, so I want it to look more natural rather than futuristic, right? And so that'll give a little bit of pop without going too crazy. And on my vibrance, I'm going to move that up to 20. And that'll pull out some of those colors a little bit, although we're going to make more adjustments down the road. Okay, so that's our basic adjustments. The next thing I'm going to move on to is split toning. Now, this is the reason, as I said before, I was going to go on to why I did not adjust white balance. Well, this is why. Split toning kind of allows me to adjust white balance rather than across the entire image. It allows me to adjust according to highlights and shadows. So here I'm going to, I, I like this combination a lot, actually. I use it in many of my photos. But I'm going to adjust the highlights up into the yellow range. Let's say about 34 is fine. And just a little bit. I'm not going to pump it up a lot. Let's say maybe about 5. Okay. And the shadows, I'm, I like to keep those in the mid-blue range. So let's say maybe around like 225, that's 226 is fine too. And we'll move that saturation up to about 10. And now if I take this off, you'll see what this does to the image. It gives it a, a nice cool feel to it without going overboard and without affecting the entire image uh, as white balance would. 
And I like that in this image with uh, so much water to have a little bit of a cool effect through split toning. And split toning can do a ton of different things to images. There's so many ways that you can adjust them. So uh, if you're trying it out for the first time, just fool with it and see what different things do. It's a great way to learn it. Okay, next adjustment is color adjustments. Now this allows me to adjust the colors, individual colors in the image. So first I'm gonna adjust the blue. And in this case, the, uh, the blue is obviously gonna affect primarily here, the pool here in front, of the, in front of the waterfall. So I'm gonna increase that saturation. Let's say move that up to about 20 and the luminance maybe to about 10. Luminance will allow the water, it basically shows how bright that color is gonna be. Now aqua, I'm gonna go a little bit further than I did with the blue, maybe up to about 40 or so. And again, luminance, let's say to about 10. The other thing I'm gonna do is I actually want to lower my green some. So I'm gonna lower the green, not very much, maybe about five, and the luminance about two. I'm actually gonna do a little more specific adjustment in a little bit here. And I might actually do the same thing with yellow here, because there's a lot of yellow in that green as well. Let's move that down some, okay. And so once I've done that, um, the adjustment may not seem huge, but especially if you look over here in the water, you can see that it does make a difference. And those small things add up to me. And again, this is only one part in the process, so those small things add up over time. So it's important to even notice those, those smaller details like that. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is use the adjustment brush. Now, the reason for this, so there's a couple different things, if the, but the adjustment brush basically allows me to adjust certain areas of the image in specific ways. So here what I'm gonna do, if you look up here at the top, there's a little haze, and that's because, um, I mean, this is a waterfall, so it's gonna be spraying mist into the air, and with the light coming down from above, you get this haze, and to me, I don't really like that so much. In some cases I might, but here I don't. So what I'm gonna do is I make this adjustment brush fairly large, and I'm gonna brush over this entire area, now, by the way, if you want to see what you're um, doing here, where the mask, is, the where you're basically you're brushing at, you push O on a PC, and that'll show you. Okay, and you can see I haven't done much yet, so I'm going to keep kind of painting over here, over this entire area. Maybe make it a little smaller now, detailed. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of brush over that whole area. And you know, it's not a big deal if I go over where I don't want to, um, like maybe here in the waterfall, because I can choose a race and remove that later on. But first. I'm not gonna worry about that. Okay, so let's turn off uh, the mask showing me where I've brushed. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to take that haze out a little bit. So let's lower the exposure some. And I'm gonna increase the contrast quite a bit. That's gonna do a lot for me. Let's move the highlights down a little bit. And let's increase the clarity. Let's say maybe about 25. And actually I'm gonna lower the shadow some too. Not too much. Okay, and I'm also, since I've adjusted, I'm going to lower the noise just a little bit just to make sure I didn't mess too much up there in that way. Okay, so let's check before and after, and you can see how much that does um, to get rid of that haze. It's very, very helpful. And if I feel like maybe there's an area where I didn't do enough, I can just kind of try to brush in a little bit more in some of these areas. And But anyway, that should do enough for now. Maybe I'll do over here a little bit more too. Okay. But remember I said that I accidentally kind of went down in here and I don't want to affect everything down there. So what I'm gonna do is choose erase and just go over that area and make sure it gets rid of uh, anything that I might have messed up on accident or gone over too far in that I didn't want to adjust so much. Okay, and that should be enough. Okay, now there's another place that I'm also gonna adjust here, this area right here on the right. Um, to me, it's too bright, it kind of distracts. So I'm gonna do a new brush and the great thing about this, let's turn that mask on again, and what this is gonna allow me to do here is I'll see where I'm brushing as I brush, but the great thing about Lightroom is it has an edge detection, and so it knows kind of, it seems like I'm trying to only brush in this area, and so you can see it even avoids the rocks. In this case, I'm actually gonna brush over the rocks as well, but it kind of does that for me. It makes life a lot easier, okay? But again, if I go over a little bit, it's not a big deal because I can erase it. Anyway, okay, so let's turn that mask off. And now I'm gonna lower the saturation, maybe about seven, it's fine. Lower the exposure by 0.1. And then uh, also the highlights some, let's lower those down. But actually I might lower my exposure a little bit more here. Okay, now if I undo that, you can see uh, it's a little bit darker now, not too dark, but enough to uh, take out a little bit of that brightness that's distracting 
uh, the I sum. Okay, so one more thing I need to do here is a graduated filter. Now the reason I'm using this is over here on the left, it's a little bit darker than the rest of the image. So this graduated filter is going to produce a nice smooth gradient um, for me to adjust that and make it look natural. Okay, so let's just increase it maybe about 0.1 here and let's up the shadows some. Let's maybe do that about 40 or so. Okay, and I'm also going to again adjust the noise a little bit. And let's turn that off. On, and there you go. You can see uh, I've it's done a nice job of um, adding a little bit of light there into the edge. Okay, and the final thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a little bit of sharpening in. Let's put it about 35. And what I can do here is I can mask, and this is going to allow me to choose where that sharpening is applied. So if I hold Alt on a PC and move that slider up, this will keep that uh, sharpening from being applied down here in the water, right? And uh, anywhere that's black, it won't be applied. Anywhere it's white, it will be, okay? And so that'll keep it nice and smooth in the water and still give me some sharpness like in the rocks and other areas. And then I'll also do a little bit of noise reduction across the image. And that pretty much sums up what I'm going to do on this image in Lightroom. There are other things I could do. For example, down here, you could remove that. But I like to do a lot of my removal and things of that nature in Photoshop because I feel like it does a little bit better. Um, but this is a good start for me. And so I'm going to push um, backslash. And this will show you what the image looked like before. And this is the image after. Do it one more time. Before, this is just straight out of the camera, and then after. The adjustments aren't major to the point that it just like completely changes the image, but it's enough to, and, and see this is my goal, I want to kind of show what it was like to be there in person. And so this draws out more how I remember it, how it looked like, without going overboard and kind of crazy. Um, and so I, I really like this as a good beginning point. I'll take, I'll export that into Photoshop and do some of my final edits there. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful. Again, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to leave them in the comments section and I'll do my best to answer them. This has been Les Taylor with lestaylorphoto.com. Hope you'll come back for more and always check the blog for more great photos.